Who do you have to know to get a bottle of wine around here? Apparently that would be me. Well, hello friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Erin, the founder and chief sommelier here at the Wine Sisters. I think we need to go back to basics this September. That's right, I think we need to go back to wine school. It's funny, I think a lot of you who've been watching for a while, and if you're based in Toronto, maybe you even attended the wine school that I actually teach. And over the last few years, the same questions keep coming up again and again and again. So I thought I'd revisit some of these fundamentals because, well, they're fundamentals and you have questions about them. So today I wanna to show you how to properly open a wine using what we what is it called a waiter's corkscrew. I'm going to show you then how to decant that wine and give you some reasons for doing that. And then I'm also going to show you the proper level to pour a wine. And spoiler alert, it's not up to the brim. I know, I was a bit disappointed myself when I found that out. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, now you'll remember way back, we did show you how to use a waiter's corkscrew. You can see that in this video right here. Scroll back after you watch this video, you'll get the nitty gritty, but I've still got my waiter. I've got a million of these kicking around this one. This one's from Wines of California, although this segment is not sponsored. So we've got our knife. I've got my double hinged lever and I've got my corkscrew. So first things first, from our bottle, we're going to open at the second lip. Hopefully this is somewhat familiar to you if you've been watching for a while. And if not, don't worry, you're not going to open at the top lip, you're going to open at the bottom lip. The reason for this is that back in the day, these neck covers were made of lead. And I don't know if anybody's ever told you this before, but it's not a good idea to drink from lead. Plus it actually makes more of a mess than it does um, keep it nice and clean. So now that we've got the top off nice and neat, we're just going to put our corkscrew into the center of the cork, give it a couple of good twists, leave about one curly cue out, and using my top lever of this hinge, bring it out to about a finger width. Then I'm going to use the bottom lever and pulling it straight up, not off to the side, but straight up. Just pull it out gently and it comes out very neatly. Now the reason why I just sniffed the bottle it's just become a habit of mine. It's not necessarily proper service, but I'm not necessarily a proper girl. I was just giving it a test to see if it had any cork taint into it or anything else that might've been somehow not appropriate for serving the wine. I do have another video as well about what to look for in cork taint and how you can discover that. But basically if you open it up and the wine smells like uh, wet cardboard or musty basement or wet dog, something like that, that dank musty smell, it means that your wine is corked and you should send it back if you're at a restaurant or return it. I'm going to show you how to decant. Now at home, to be quite honest, I love these pitchers. This is a ceramic pitcher that I picked up in France because I'm just a little bit extra like that. And I love it the most. I think the color and just the uh, ceramic part of it, I think it just brings a bit of whimsy to the dining table. I don't always want to have these stand on ceremony dinner parties, but I love that it has a handle. It has this convenient spout, but most importantly, it has a great air to wine ratio. The reason why you decant at all there's a bit of showmanship involved, of course, but when you get that air into the wine, it allows it to open up. It allows those aromatics and those flavors to come through even more so. Notice in the bottle, we have such a, we have such a narrow opening that you're not allowing for a, lot of, um, for a lot of air to come in and open that wine up. So decanting your wine really helps do that. Now in restaurants, I pulled this one out of my uh, cupboard and you can see that it's super dusty. Why is it super dusty? Because I never ever use it. I got this to practice decanting for my sommelier exam. This is very, this kind of shape is very common in restaurants. And when I was working in restaurants, I couldn't stand it. Because even though they do have this wide bowl that will fit all the wine, the narrow opening, again, kind of like a wine bottle. It doesn't allow for much air exchange, although you've got it down here. However, what I hated the most is that when I was pouring it out, you know, it would get caught in this side. So you'd kind of have to pour it upside down and tip it to the side and kind of jiggle it around. And it didn't really make for elegant service. So this is not my favorite shape of a decanter at all. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. Like I said, I normally like the whimsy of these, but because I wanna show you about decanting, I'm going to use this one, this is something that I use more for some of the pitcher drinks that we make. You can see some of those pitcher drinks right here, uh, but I'm gonna use this just so you can see it come through. 
So all you're going to do, especially if you're going to be decanting for sediment, that's less of an issue these days unless you have a very old wine, but you remove the neck and you'd put uh, a light underneath and you would watch to see as any sediment came up through the shoulder of the glass. Now what we're doing more often than not is we're decanting either to make a bit of a show about it, because let's face it, wine service, there's a little bit of showmanship in it. and. I'm quite frankly here for it. But you're mostly doing it for that aeration that I talked about. You're pouring it from the bottle. It's been, the wine is a living, breathing thing. It's, it's been trapped in the bottle for at least a year, if not several years, and it needs time to stretch itself out to reveal its best self. If you were trapped, you know, on an airplane, en route to Europe for a six, eight, 10 hour flight, you know, you aren't fresh as a daisy when you get off that flight either. You need time to stretch, brush your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. You need a little bit of time to reveal your best self to the world and so does your wine. So that's what we're going to do for it right now. So I'm gonna take my bottle, I have my decanter, and I'm just going to pour it straight in. Now, a lot of fancy wine people, this is when I was going to school, I haven't heard of this sentence in a long time, thank God. Hopefully most people have stopped talking about it. But I used to work at this one restaurant where the owner would always be like, yeah, Aaron, can you uh, grab that wine and serve it to table five? And you know, just really bruise it, really bruise that wine. Honestly, I don't know what the hell people are talking about. I think it meant don't damage it at all, but you're not going to. So this wine, as suspected, it's a fairly youthful red. Uh, there isn't any sediment that I can see. Normally I would be putting a light if I was concerned about sediment, I'm not. So I'm just pouring this and you can already get those gorgeous aromatics. In this particular case, lots of blackberry and chocolate, like it's already wafting out of this decanter, which is a real turn on, to be quite frank. General rule of thumb, you know, I like to say decant for about an hour. So you get home from work, you decant your wine, you leave it on the dining room table, maybe, maybe you pour yourself a little glass of sparkling or a cocktail, you go about making your dinner. It takes 30, 45, 60 minutes to make dinner. So by the time you sit down, your wine is nice and decanted. Yes, there are special wines out there that some people will double decant or decant in the morning and so on and so forth. That gets fairly case specific. So I'm just talking generally an hour, you should be fine. And now what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you the level of which to pour. So you're all sitting around for your dinner party, your wine is nicely decanted, you've got your glass. Now, this actually is a question that comes up quite a bit. Um, in lots of places. I do a lot of uh, television appearances here in Toronto, actually on, on national Canadian television shows. And when the producers and set decorators are like, how far should we pour the wine? And then my wine soon. So this is apparently a very common question and it, it, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a sense of consternation. So hopefully I can clear this up for you. When you have your glass of wine, you want to pour it to the widest part of the bowl, not to the brim, sadly. And when you go to those restaurants that offer you different size pours, three, six, eight, nine, 14 ounces, whatever. If I have an opportunity to go to those restaurants and it's a better deal to get the 10 ounce glass than it is to get the four ounce glass, I'll get the 10 ounce, but ask them to put it in a little carafe or a little split and keep it off to the side so I can pour it myself. I only want it up to the widest part of the bowl. Why? It goes back to our aeration. Let me show you what I mean. So when we pour in our wine, leaving the glass flat on the table, we're only pouring it up to that wide bowl. So now what I can do is I can swirl it. It's not gonna come sloshing all out. And that space between the edge of the glass and where the wine is, that allows for a lot of that aeration as well. So when I smell it, I can really appreciate it. You know what? Next week I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna do a video on the three steps of tasting. So that way you'll know how to appreciate it when a server comes up to the table and pours you your wine. You'll know what you're looking for. And then the week after that, I'll show you how to st store your wines for the long term as well. I think that'll be helpful, right? If it is, if there's anything you wanna know here at our wine school, just leave them in the comments below. Any questions, I promise you, I will get back to them as soon as I see them. And if you want to, in the meantime, I've put a link to our newsletter. Every week we send out great wine recommendations, food and wine pairing tips, really easy recipes, and some cocktail ideas as well. So you will get loads of stuff delivered right to your inbox. Just click that link below and sign up for our weekly newsletter. And I promise you, you're going to love being part of the wine tribe. This is smelling great. I'm pretty happy I decanted it. I hope that helped. Leave the questions below if you have any, and I will see you next week for more Wine School. And until then, stay well, drink better.